All right, welcome to our third video on circuit bending, where I'm gonna try to get this wand back together in a way that makes it feel like a complete instrument. There's nothing wrong with having an instrument that's a pile of wires on your desk that is certainly also an aesthetic option, but I'm excited to try to get everything back in this case. Significantly today, I've got some new tools. I've got my drill, so I'm gonna try to put some holes into this star so we can put in our knobs. I also have my soldering iron. I'm gonna give a disclaimer once again that this really isn't a tutorial on how to solder. There are lots and lots of good videos around if you wanna look into that. And so if that interests you, I encourage you to do so. A couple updates since last video. One is that I've changed our glitch slit, I've changed our glitch switch to this button here. I kind of like this button a little bit better. Again, still our potentiometer that affects the clock speed. I ended up taking out the button that bypassed the speaker. It didn't really seem all that fun when I started to play with it more. But what I did instead was I found another short on the board that's interesting and I made a switch for that. So this isn't a button that is instantaneous. This turns on. And once again, I'm not really sure what's happening here. But it somehow wires this control to the speed. So uh, I think I'm going to the clock resistor with this capacitor that's, that's detecting this. But again, it's nice to have something that I can now toggle on and off. I can flick the switch and change that. So now all I need to do is recreate this inside the case. And I want to replace these wires that I have alligator clips for with something more permanent. A couple of things just that I want to point out that I'm thinking about. It looks like I have this beautiful spot in the middle to put things, but keep in mind my star wants to go right in the middle there. So really the only place that I have to put components are here, here, and here. So this point in the star has the speaker, this point has the sensor, and right here is where the circuit board is going to return to. One final thing that I also am going to try to do is I want to add, this is just a little RCA jack. RCA jacks can be used for a lot of things, but they can be used for audio. And I'm thinking about putting that, if I can, seeing if I can fit that one in here. And what that'll do is that'll give us a way to get audio out of this to play to an amplifier or something like that, which might make this a little bit more useful of an instrument for performance. So I'm considering now whether I want to solder these components up before I put them in uh, or after. I'm looking, it doesn't look like I have a, I must have a, a bolt to attach that on. This one's probably gonna be the trickiest. Again, it's so big. I do worry a little bit about that fitting in, but we'll try to make plans. So maybe I'll start with something a little bit easier. Maybe I'll start by soldering wires to this button and then drilling a hole that I can mount it in there. You know, really, it would be ideal if I could have my buttons on this end, right? So I'm holding the wand there, I'm waving it, and then I can just push buttons there. But I don't think that's in the cards because there's not any space to add things here and the batteries are in there. So instead, I'm going to put them up there. So maybe I'll start by trying to put that button in there. One thing with these plastic toys is I find it's always a good idea to start with a smaller drill bit than you need and then work your way up. And that really prevents the plastic from cracking. If I were to start immediately with the large size that this se seems to require, maybe this. 7 over 32, that looks uh, even a bit too small. I betcha I would just crack this plastic, so I'm going to start with something very small to begin with. If I were being especially careful, I might also do some measurements and really make sure I center these holes. So I don't want to put a hole in my bench here, so maybe I'll borrow this for a moment. Thank you. 
All right, that's still working. What I'm gonna do next is I could go ahead and drill all of the holes and then solder everything up. But since I've got so many wires here, it feels like it's smarter to now do a little bit of soldering and then get these clips out of the way and then start working on the next, getting the next component in just to make sure that we're, we're maintaining all of the connections that we have. Okay, I did a very bad job keeping track of my wires there and I knocked some clips off, but I think I got it. Let's check our glitch switch. It's working. So we've cut down the number of wires we have here. Again, is next the pot or... This I feel a little bit more confident about. Let's, let's do that. Okay. My toggle's working. But my glitch switch is glitch switch isn't right now, so let's see what we've done. Oh, what's happened is this is from my LED here. It's gotten disconnected. But as I mentioned, yeah, that just came right off. As I mentioned, I wanted to replace this LED, so let's just do that. Oh, there it goes. Oh, <laughs> I was trying to pull it through the wrong way. All right, I uh, I want to replace that with a blue one. So I guess what was holding th this was glued in. Uh, that's a bit annoying. I'm gonna have to reattach that with glue. Okay, sirrah, sirrah. Let's see if we've got our LED back. Hey, there we go. Let's see if the glitch switch is working again. Oh, it isn't. That's surprising. Let's see what's wrong there. I mean, you know, we didn't know what was going on there, so it's possible that changing the resistor had an effect. Uh, let's uh, let's leave that be for the moment, and then let's focus on getting this potentiometer in, and then let's see if we can uh, deal with that switch. Hmm, this one worries me the most. Uh, I can cut off these end parts and solder in there, so I guess we'll just give it a go. And uh, this, however, I might. Uh, you might have to be very careful. Here 
There's all sorts of pink plastic debris all over my desk now. I have a knob I'm gonna put over this, but it looks like I should get that screw in first. Okay. So something's happened to my glitch switch. I'm not completely sure what. Uh, I either wired it up wrong. I'm not sure I hate that, though. Toggle. I think I'm okay with not troubleshooting my glitch switch. <laughs> Call it laziness, but I'm okay with that. All right, so now the last thing I want to try to do before I close it up is get in this audio out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to wire up this audio jack in parallel. Oh, I've pulled off this this wire off the speaker too. In my violent soldering, it's, uh, it's okay. We need to fix this anyway. Double check. So far, so good. Gently, ever so gently. All the wires getting inside. Let's try an A2.
All right, so we'll leave it there. One day I might go back to working on that keyboard again, but in the meantime, give this a try and let me know what you come up with.